All right, I am um, resigned to doing this um, units of measurement or a conversation, having a conversation with you about measurements. And all I'm gonna do <laughs> is share with you a couple of charts. Um, those of you out in the YouTube world, you don't care what I require my students to know or not know, um, feel free to print this chart and include it in your external brain so that you do not have to put this information to memory. Um, none of it needs to be to memory. I still have to look things up and especially things in these charts. But I did want to just take a second to talk through some of the common things we're going to measure in this class. There are many other things we can measure. And if you go further in your science studies, you're definitely going to have other things to measure. But let's just look at this. If you go to the center, oh my goodness, I don't even know where my mouse is. I don't think you can see it anymore. If you go to the center of this um, chart, you'll see property measured. And that's the thing that you're going to focus in on. The first quality that we're measuring, the first property we're measuring is temperature. We're definitely going to play with temperature in this class. And so um, what I've included in this chart are some common units of temperature measure. And units are just the, the measure that we're using. And you can use a thermometer to measure the temperature of an item in Celsius, which is one unit, one type of unit, or in Fahrenheit, which is another type of unit. Or if you look in the far left column, you'll see that the unit is called Kelvin. Kelvin is the scientific um, measure of temperature as opposed to the common Celsius or Fahrenheit. The other thing I included all the way over to the right in this chart are the conversion factors. And this, those conversion factors allow you to convert between units. I have grand wishes to have my brain comprehend Celsius as a unit of temperature instead of Fahrenheit. I do know that zero degrees Celsius is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit because that's where water freezes. 100 degrees Celsius is equal to 212 degrees Fahrenheit because that's where water boils. I do have those in my head, but look at that conversion between Celsius and Fahrenheit. I can't do that math in my head, which means I'm often left going, I got nothing. If I get a temperature in Celsius, I, um, it, I do not track very well. That's on my life list. Learning Spanish from Duolingo and learning Celsius as a temperature, um, I would like to do that. The next property that we measure is mass. The common or um, scientific unit of mass is going to be the kilogram. The American version is the pound, and I've included the conversion there. We will talk length in this class, and the common or the scientific unit that we will use is the meter. Um, we will count very small things, and I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time talking about the mole as a unit of counting. The mole is gigantic. It is 602 sextillion things. That's a huge, massive number, and we use it to count atoms when we talk about chemistry. We'll talk about it more as we move forward. Time, we need a unit of measurement. We talk about it in seconds. And then we're going to talk about energy. We spend three lectures just talking about energy. And the scientific units are joules. Common units are calories. Calories are a measure of the amount of energy in something. OK, now I want that to go away. And I want to bring up your next um, chart. Another chart that I encourage you to print 
awesome if you can submit it to memory, but I'm afraid to, I try not to ask you to do things that I can't do, and I do not have these in my memory. I do sort of have them ranked, so I could, I could probably put the pieces together over time, but it just takes time. We have to just play with these things. This is um, a way of talking about really big and really small numbers, and it is the metric system and using exponential notation. Once again, just like talking about controlled, um, different controls and experimental design, this is something we're going to do over and over and over again. So converting between units, talking about units, figuring out how to do it. Um, I, I'm here with you and we will have examples in our first lab and we'll mess with this throughout the semester. So don't get overwhelmed, but it probably is a good idea to have this handy for yourself so that you can um, do conversions. I could ask you a question like, I have three nanometers, how many picometers is that? And then you would um, be able to, I promise you, would be able to give me an answer to that. That's it. That's all I can do. Now I'm going to talk to you about graphing and then I'm done.